Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to Phil's Computer Lab and another video. I'm really excited about this one. As you know, I've been benchmarking a lot of graphics cards in the past and I've always been using the same test machine in order for all the benchmarks to be comparable. But a while ago, I did an interactive 1 GHz project and um, yeah, you asked me to try out a few operating systems like Windows 2000 and XP and Millennium Edition and I actually found that there was very little difference in terms of performance. However, there's a huge benefit of running Windows XP and that is getting uh, access to GOG games as well as Steam games and over the years I've purchased a ton of games so this will let me uh, do a lot more showcases and maybe add some new benchmarks as well. So these are some of the parts of the new machine and I'm gonna spend some time uh, just going over all the parts explaining the reasons why I chose them and yeah basically uh, this is a feature packed video it's probably gonna end up being quite long but um, yeah I think it, you guys might find this interesting a bit of a behind the scenes project so to speak so let's start by talking about the heart of the system the motherboard and the processor. Those with uh, an eagle eye or a keen eye to details, you probably already know what this is. We're definitely going with AMD and it is a socket 939 system. The motherboard is from ASUS. It's an A8V Deluxe. So the Deluxe version has uh, a secondary Promise SATA controller as well as the one from VIA. Um, we've got five PCI an AGP 8X slot and also four slots for memory, but I'm only going to use two for two, giga, two gigabytes of DDR400. The chipset on this motherboard is from VIA. It's the K8T800 Pro. So a fairly decent and compatible chipset. Uh, performance should be just fine. The ID controllers are also very good. The SATA controllers, however, they are not that great. So you can't boot from an optical SATA drive and you also can't use SATA 2 and SATA 3 devices, only SATA 1 devices work with this motherboard. So that's the reason why I'm going to use a uh, separate PCI SATA controller card. So what processor did I choose? Well this CPU is something I really wanted back in the day, however I went with the sensible uh, option and got a Sempron CPU and just overclocked it. So the processor is the Athlon 64, the 4000 Plus. So that's one of the top uh, CPUs. I could have gone with the FX, but I just wanted to keep it uh, simple and ordinary. And these chips are actually really easy to find on eBay, these Athlon 64s, and they don't cost a lot, to be honest. And I like the 4000 Plus. It's a nice round number, and it should have lots of performance to drive any of the AGP cards that work under Windows XP. Okay, let's talk about storage and memory. For the main storage, I'm using a SSD. There's just no way around it. Uh, SSDs are so fast to image, to install games, and I've tried using an, uh, like a time, a period correct ID or a SATA hard drive, and it's just not cutting it. And you might say this is a bit silly getting an SSD for a Windows XP benchmarking machine, but if you can save a few minutes with every benchmark and every time you re-image the machine, that time adds up and that means more videos, more content for you guys to consume. Now, because the onboard SATA controller can't talk to a SATA 3 device, I'm using a silicon image uh, PCI SATA controller card with good two SATA channels here. I'm also going to use a SATA DVD drive mostly just to install Windows and maybe the occasional game that I have on disk actually, although most games will come from uh, GOG and Steam. For memory, we're using Corsa RAM. I've got two sticks of one gigabytes each, so that puts the total of the system memory to two gigabytes and that should be plenty. It is CL2 memory, nice and fast, and I believe you have to raise the voltage to set the proper timings as well. So a bit of uh, overclocking involved with these memory modules. 
And a few other bits and pieces, we've got a CPU cooler. This one is from ID Cooling. I haven't used it before. It's one of those traditional sunflower type coolers that I really like. I prefer these over the tower coolers. It's got a rating of up to 90-95, 100 watts thereabouts. So that also should be plenty for the Athlon 64 4000 Plus. Uh, two SATA cables. We're using a Sound Blaster. It's the Odigi. 2 ZS, very good sound card and uh, yep, does EAX and all of that. At a later stage I might be switching over to an X5 but for the time being this sound card is great. I have uh, three of those in total so if this one fails um, then I always have a backup solution. So sometimes I pick parts that I have multiple uh, versions of just in case something goes wrong. And I will be using a floppy drive, uh, I'll have to flash the BIOS and also for loading the uh, SATA controller driver. You have to press F6 when booting, but I will show you all that um, once I've hooked this up and put it together. I'm going to connect it to my capture card and we're going to install Windows and I'll show you all the details. Okay guys, so here we are on the uh, computer hooked up to my capture PC. I'm just going to enter the BIOS and we're going to do a couple of things. First task is to flash the BIOS. Um, I'll also show you the BIOS and overview of any settings I'm going to change. And then we're going to install uh, Windows XP and we have to load the SATA driver for that. So here we are in the BIOS and let's have a look what the bi current BIOS version is. Uh, version something 09 and that's quite old it's from 2005 and I had a look on the website with the BIOS downloads I'm gonna put a uh, photo in the picture the latest BIOS is from 2007 it's actually a beta version uh, version 2 so that's what, I'm, what we're gonna go with we have boot order options here where we can boot from the uh, floppy drive from the solid state which is on the SATA controller and from the optical drive which is on the SATA controller I'm just going to leave that to the solid state and we can overwrite the boot order by uh, pressing F8. So by pressing F8. Um, so the splash screen will pop up in a second and then we press F8. Boot selection pop-up menu has been selected. So I've created a boot disk from bootdisk.com uh, I believe is the website. Um, it's got a couple of images you can download and I created one with no drivers, it's basically, it is just for flashing the BIOS. I got the latest BIOS off the website and I got the ASUS BIOS flashing program of the uh, CD of the disk that came with the motherboard. I actually have the motherboard boxed with the manual the disks and everything. So that made life easier. Now usually I'm a bit hesitant with the BIOS flashing, but I always want to flash the latest BIOS. It's just something I like to do. This one has the BIOS chip, um, removable so and I've got a flash on external so if anything goes wrong I should be able to just flash it uh, back alrighty let's have a look there's a readme file type afu dos txt let's see what the process is so okay afu dos space slash i and then followed by the file name we want to flash in my case it's a8 VD ten eighteen dot double two. Okay, can't huh keyboard stop working. That's not good. 
I'm just going to plug in a PS2 keyboard just in case because I'm using a USB keyboard. Alrighty, let's restart the computer and hopefully everything works. But yeah, looks like the USB keyboard stopped working halfway through. So I just quickly plugged in a PS2 keyboard. Can we see the BIOS version here? Yep, at the top, version 1018, beta version 002. Fantastic. Okay, so let's load the BIOS default. There's nothing I need to change here, the date and the time, that's all correct. CPU config, I'll leave everything default. Chipset, I'll leave everything default. Onboard devices, I'll turn off the onboard audio. The SATA controller and the one from the, uh, the Promise. SATA controller, it's got two actually. Uh, I'll leave the LAN on, uh, just to activate some Steam games. Um, do it, no. And we don't need any firewire, we don't need a serial port, we don't need a parallel port, yep. Plug and play, yes, I'm using a plug and play operating system, that's all, I'll leave that, I'll leave that, I'll leave all that stuff. Standard, uh, let's have a look, temperatures we're getting, 39.5 CPU, chassis fan, just under 16,000, I'll leave all that default, and... I'll leave that default as well. Boot order, first device, we're gonna boot off the Blitzwolf's SSD. I'm gonna disable all the other ones. I can just press F8 to bypass that. I'll leave all that default and that's really it. Alrighty, so I'm quickly gonna change the floppy disk and put the SATA driver into the floppy drive. Okay, that's all done. So we're gonna save all the changes and we're gonna reboot and boot off the optical disk drive. I've uh, created myself a Windows XP Pro uh, boot disk. And I used Nlight to do a automated installation file. So it's got the license key in there, it's got my username, my network name. So everything should work uh, without having to do any user input. Just in the, in the beginning, where to do the partition. Uh, but otherwise everything else should work automatically. Okay, so boot off the optical drive and then we need to press F6 to load the SATA driver. I just heard the floppy drive make a noise. Okay, I'm pressing F6. There you go. So. With the boot CD, the ISO file, you can burn it onto a CD or a DVD. Uh, the DVD version actually loads a little bit uh, faster and using Nlight, I did an automated installation, created a user um, and yeah, it's really convenient because it allows you to basically install Windows XP and you can walk away, you can do something else because um, XP can take uh, a while to install. I'm going with Service Pack 3 simply because I believe the compatibility with software is better. Uh, I haven't looked into performance. The machine has two gig of RAM and that should be enough, I believe. Um, but maybe that's something for a later project looking into differences in service packs and performance. I will disable automatic updates and I might just install updates offline with one of these unofficial service packs. Okay, so here we can load the storage driver. So we need to press S and then it has a look on the floppy. And here it is, it's the silicon image SATA RAID controller driver. So I just press enter and it loads some of the files of the floppy disk. There you go, I don't have any more, so I'll just press enter to continue. So wonderful, here we are. Now regarding the SSD, there is something you need to be aware of and that has to do with aligning the partitions. Windows XP uh, can't do that. I believe Vista Service Pack 1 or 2 uh, started doing the uh, partition alignment. So what I did, I basically just uh, created the NTFS partition on my modern Windows 10 desktop. I've got a video footage here showing you uh, how that works. And that makes sure it's aligned. So what you have to do is basically just, just in install on that partition, but don't format it. You just leave the current file system intact, no changes, press enter, and off it goes installing Windows. And really that's all you have to do in terms of user interaction. So I'll just let the capture card run in the background and we should be back with a working desktop.
Okay, so that's all done. I will uh, look back at the video file and let you know how long that whole installation uh, took. So I'm just doing a few housekeeping things that I usually do. So I'll turn off the uh, alerts. I'll make sure automatic updates is turned off. Alrighty, I'll quickly just activate Windows XP. Okay, so that's all activated, ready to go. I'm just gonna have a quick look in Device Manager. Now the graphics card I used uh, for this installation is a GeForce 3 card. So let's have a look at this and anything that hasn't been picked up. Okay, definitely the Ethernet, Ethernet controller. I believe that's a Marvel chip. The sound card, that's the uh, Sound Blaster Audi G2. Then of course the uh, SATA RAID controller, I'll just install a driver here and PCI input device. That might be the Firewire controller that, that comes with the Audi G2, I'm not 100% sure. Um, but everything else, uh, that might actually be the VIA onboard controller. I'm not 100% sure on that because we can see the silicon image controller here. Okay, so that might actually be the VIA controller. So loading the wire chips the driver should do that. Let's see if the yep, the, the GeForce 3 already has a driver. Let's see what version we've got here. 56.73. Okay. So that means yeah. I just have a few drivers to do. But the very first I'm gonna very first thing I'm gonna do now has nothing to do with drivers. Um I will shut down the machine and take an image of the current hard drive and that will be the main image uh, from where I'm gonna work with. Okay, so I've already installed a few drivers. I'll just show you my USB flash drive, so under drivers. I've already installed the latest via chipset driver and that got rid of the entry for the PCI SATA controller. Um, so let me just uh, scroll down. So we've got both We've got the via RAID controller and the one from Silicon Image. So we still got the Ethernet left, the sound card, and that's part of the sound card. I think that's a PCI Firewire controller. Now, I've just installed the graphics driver as well. I went with version 71.89. That seems that is the latest version that still supports the GeForce 256 and the GeForce 2, which is, yeah, I find quite important. Okay, I'm just not gonna install the cool bits registry tweak which will unlock a few options in the driver uh, for benchmarking that is necessary because you have to uh, access the vsync controls so i believe it's under let's have a look should be under here so vsync vertical sync um, we change that from application control to off and that should take care of benchmarking. Now, with the uh, Coolbits registry tweak, we also get access to uh, overclocking and a few other things, but we're not gonna do any overclocking. That's really the only thing that I need access to, the vertical sync, sync setting. Alrighty, that's all done. Next up, we're gonna install the sound card. Under Windows XP, the Audigy 2 ZS has a web installer, which is very small and tiny, so um, that makes it really easy. We don't have to uh, have original disks, we just want a driver to work with our games, so that makes life really easy. Okay, here we're back. Uh, we're not gonna do the auto update, we've got the latest driver. And does it gonna ask us to register? Uh, maybe not, okay. So let's have a quick look in device manager again. I think the only thing left is the ethernet controller. Uh, let me just have a look what's on my USB. I put it under driver, deluxe. I believe it's this one here, extract all. Let's have a look if there's an installer or if we have to install it through the device manager. I also dumped the driver CD. I think there's an Asus probe application that I would like to install uh, to get a bit of hardware monitoring going under Windows. Although with running Windows XP, so we can use all these fancy tools like MSI Afterburner and uh, hardware monitor. So that opens up a lot of possibilities. So let's have a look. Is there an installer Windows? 
Um, which one set up must be this one okay software install driver XP install now yeah I think that's it return the main menu exit okay so the only other thing we need is direct X I'm gonna install that's start X 9 I believe and then we're just gonna install 3 Mark 2001 r quickly run it see what the score is and then that's pretty much it for the video um, after that I will shut down the machine one more time take another image and then I'll have a look at what benchmarks I'm gonna install and so on but that was pretty much it but we're not quite done yet so hang on for the final benchmark now where's my 3D Mark 2001 is here Funny story about 3D Mark. Um, a while ago, they made available a lot of the legacy benchmarks, but not 99, not 2000, not 2001. So um, I basically emailed them and said, "Hey, we're using this in the retro community. How about you can give us some free license keys?" And the rep wasn't quite sure where to get them from, so someone else uh, in the discussion he quickly hacked the program and found a generic created a generic uh, FutureMark user with a license key and FutureMark gave us the AOK -okay and there you go, the rest is history. So we can now use these uh, for free. You can just go to the FutureMark website or even go to my website, philscomputerlab.com where I've uh, put all the license keys up there. Okay, we should be ready to go. Let's run 3 Mark and see what this machine can do with the GeForce 3. Um, but it seems to be fairly decent. Now, another last thing I wanna try is having a look at CPU Z and making sure that all the memory options and so on that the FSB that that's all uh, legit so I think that's the latest one let's install that and see if it works alrighty so Athlon 64 uh, San Diego core we got um, a mega uh, level 2 cache uh, 2.4 gigahertz 200 megahertz bus speed let's have a look at memory so memory runs at 200 so one one to one that's fine command rate is 2t so I won't, might want to tweak that and the memory runs at CL3 now in order to run that one at CL let me have a look at the SPD okay I might have to google it I think this is an, an overclock or RAM which needs extra voltage to and then you can dial in faster timings but I actually couldn't see a voltage memory option in the BIOS but I'll have a look at the command rates I'm just going to reboot the machine go into BIOS and we're going to have a look CPU, memory configuration, memory configuration. Ah, okay. So 2T command rate. Probably disable should probably put it to 1T. Okay, let's have a look what else we can. Mem clock mode. Limit, okay, one to one. Hardware memory hole. We don't need that. Auto. Interleaving last memory access to be spread out of banks on the same node. Huh, interesting. Burst length, timings, manual. So I can set the timings, but I don't think I can overclock the memory, the voltage. Uh, I don't think that's possible on this board. Ah, voltages, okay, AR overclocking, manual. FSB, CPU voltage, we can change that. AGP voltage, there you go, DDR voltage. Okay, so I'm gonna quickly hop on the internet and do some research on the, those memory sticks and see what the timings are and how much voltage we need. Okay, so we're back in the bar. So the way this memory works by default, it just uses the SPD values according to the JEDEC, uh, JEDEC standard and uses 3448 timings. Um, and a new egg, I actually found these specifications. So we need a voltage of 2.75. So let's go to DDR voltage. So I'm gonna go with 2.8 straight up. And then we're gonna go to memory configurations and where are the timings, manual. So now we gotta get cache latency should be two. Then 
Tiras. Okay, that seems to be. I wrote these numbers down. Tiras. That should be six. Um, TRP. Oh, I don't have. I have TRCD. Should be three. And TRP. That is TRP. Should be also three and I think all the other ones with that the T rest is at the end which uh, at the second one should be the last one um, okay well let's save the settings boot into Windows and have a look into in CPU set and see if those timings are dialed in and then we might I might run 3d mark 2001 one more time and see if the score actually improves a little bit which I, I doubt because I think the graphics card might be holding things back, things back actually. So let's have a look at the memory options again. The uh, defaults are 3338 and 2.5 volts, but what have we got now? We've got 2336, that's exactly what I wanted. And we also got the command rate set to 1T. It um, doesn't show the voltage. So let's see if we can load that tool from the um, USB must be down here. Okay, so CPU temperature 39, motherboard 25. We're getting fan speed. We're getting voltages. Uh, they all seem to be fine. Um, is that it? So we don't really getting memory voltage or V core information. Is there anything more? Okay, so yeah, we, we are getting a. F oh, okay. There you go. Voltage monitor. There's a V core, that's nice, but okay. So we're getting a few things, but not very much. So let's run hardware monitor and see if we're getting anything extra here. So, 5, 3.3, um, not sure what these are. S temperatures, we're getting fan speed, core utilization, we're getting something from the SSD and the USB flash drive, but that's it. Okay, so yeah. So we are getting a few readings, but not as many as like on a, on a modern motherboard. Okay, now that we've tuned everything, the especially the memory timings, let's run 3 Mark 2001 once more and see if the score changes in any way. So okay, now we're getting 10,459. And look guys, that's really it. Our machine is up and running. Hopefully you found it interesting, a bit of behind the scenes, what's going on and how I tick, how my brain operates and how I plan things. So yeah, my next move is uh, to suss out what benchmarks um, am I gonna use for my core benchmark suite. But I, the main reason I'm using this is, the uh, main reason I'm switching to XP is because I wanna use um, GOG and Steam games and do more showcases of classic games with FRAPS counter analysis and that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, let me know down below what do you think. Also, if you made it this far, good on you. Uh, this is uh, one of the longer videos and yeah, uh, let me know what you think. Thumbs up, thumbs down, the usual stuff. Subscribe if you haven't done so and uh, yep, I see you soon uh, with a new video and very likely you'll see a video soon using this new benchmark test setup.